Steelmaking started in Kent when the first UK mini mill was established at Wellmarsh, Sheerness in the early 1970s. Tem Steel was born in January 2003 when the Al Tawerki Group of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia breathed new life into the company and steel production recommenced on the 10th of March 2003. Since that time, there has been continuous investment and expansion of the production capability of the company, with the first target to supply the ISPF rolling mills with feedstock billets for the production of reinforcing bars for the Middle Eastern markets. Current production is at the rate of 750,000 tonnes of continuously cast billets each year. The Thames Steel site is strategically placed between the huge raw material source of London and the home counties and the gateway ports to continental Europe and the world. It is also well placed for the national motorway network for further distribution of products in the UK. The process at Thames Steel is based upon ferrous scrap as raw material which is recycled in a high-powered electrical arc furnace, then finely adjusted for temperature and chemistry in a secondary steel making unit before casting continuously into 150 mm square steel billets of high quality and specification. The steel scrap arrives on site by road and rail and it is closely inspected for quality and checked for radioactivity before being passed into the working process. After tipping in the scrapyard area, it is again inspected to ensure that it meets the ordered grade and specification. It is then carefully mixed and loaded into the scrap basket by magnet or grab to meet the tight recipe for the steel specification to be produced. During loading, the basket is positioned on the weigh bridge to verify that the correct amounts of each type of scrap are put into the mixture. Lime is added to the scrap as a flux and slag former. Once the baskets are filled, they are transferred using a hydraulic lifting vehicle or carrier to the melt shop. The first round basket holds approximately 40 tonnes for charging directly into the furnace hearth. The following two rectangular baskets each hold approximately 30 tonnes of scrap and are charged to the furnace shaft which is an integral part of the hot gas fume offtake from the furnace. Whilst the first basket of scrap is being melted, the two subsequent baskets of scrap are heated by the off gases and feed down continuously into the furnace. The melting process is assisted by oxygen and carbon input through a door injection lance with additional carbon injected through the furnace roof. Melting of the scrap in the furnace shaft is accelerated using oxyfuel burners positioned at the base of the offtake shaft. Once the scrap is melted and at the correct temperature, the steel is poured through a tap hole situated in the furnace base into a refractory line ladle which holds approximately 95 tons of steel. Alloys are added during the tapping process to bring the steel chemistry to the bottom of the aim specification. The ladle is then transferred to one of two secondary steel making units where it is further refined until it is at the correct temperature and meets middle range chemistry. Once this process is complete, an insulating powder is added to the top of the steel and a refractory line lid is placed on the ladle top. This ensures that the temperature of the steel remains in tight control during the casting process. The ladle of steel is placed on a turret and then brought into line over the tun dish for casting the steel billets. Pouring between the ladle and tun dish is through a refractory tube which prevents reoxidation of the steel. The tun dish holds approximately 25 tons of liquid steel and has four nozzles in the base which align with the four casting moulds. The steel is poured at controlled speed and temperature into the casting moulds at approximately two tons per minute. The moulds are copper and are water-cooled on the outside to give solidification of the metal during casting. Synthetic lubrication oil is added at the lip of the moulds to keep the solidifying steel free from the moulds. Oscillation of the moulds during casting also ensures that the solidifying billets can be withdrawn smoothly from the mould. Below the moulds are carefully placed water sprays which continue the cooling process to give controlled solidification of the steel and the resultant high-quality cast billets. 
At the base of the machine, the hot billets are straightened and cut to lengths of between 6 and 15 metres, depending on the customer's requirements. The billets are cooled on the turnover bed to ensure that they are straight and free from surface cracking. When the billets have cooled to a temperature of approximately 500 degrees centigrade, they are identified and removed from the cooling bed by magnet and stacked until cooling is complete. The cooled billets are then transferred and packed in 10-ton lots before moving to a stacking area and assembled ready for loading in a vessel bound for Dammam in Saudi Arabia. The packed billets are transferred by Maffi trailer to the ship side and then loaded, using the ship's gear, into the hold of the vessel. Vessel sizes may vary between 30,000 tonnes to 50,000 tonnes capacity. Once the ship has been loaded under control, it embarks for Saudi Arabia, a journey of approximately 21 days. In Dammam, the billets are transferred to the rolling mills, where they are rolled into reinforcement bars and cooled for use in construction projects. The whole of the production process at Thamesteel is approved to British standard EN ISO 9001-2000, which is our guarantee. Thamesteel, a quality company producing high quality steels. Thamesteel Limited, part of the Alterworky group of companies.